Welcome to Literacy Live. You want to know what's happened in the real estate market? Then this show is for you. I'm your host, Matt Literacy. Today's podcast, the topic is an update on COVID and how the Delta is impacting the market. We haven't done a COVID podcast in quite some time. Frankly, I didn't think we needed to do one. But uh, due to some of the recent developments um, that has kind of delayed office openings and some people are fearful of possible lockdowns, we don't know. Um, I want to kind of give an update of kind of what's going out there. So we put together a bunch of questions and I'm going to kind of rattle them off. How is it in Chicago right now with COVID? Um, honestly, I mean, we all have to wear masks. So everybody has to wear masks in any public setting uh, other, other than like being outdoors. Um, I mean, I think, I think people are just kind of used to it. I think like last year masks, people are like, oh my God, I hate masks. I have to wear them now. People are like, they suck, but I'm going to put them on. And that's it. I think people just learn to live with them. It's, it's like putting on a jacket when it's cold out. You just got to do it. Um, have there been any recent mandates or updates to the rules? Just the mask rule right now. More to come, probably. I, I, would, I would assume it's, they're going to restrict things more, um, considering that the city we live in and uh, just the fact that they're, uh, we're, we're kind of crazy on these rules in, in a sense that not in a bad way, but I think we're, we're a little bit stricter than other states. So I, I'm, I'm going to assume that mandates are going to get worse as we head into the winter. Are people wearing masks indoors? Yep, we talked about that. Do any of the new updates impact real estate professionals specifically? Um, right now, we all have to wear masks, obviously, in tour. Um, I mean, I don't make most of my clients wear masks in a car with me if it's just me and them, and you know they're vaccinated, I'm vaccinated, I don't see the point. Um, no offense to anybody offended out there for saying that, but personally, three people vaccinated in a car, I don't think we need a mask. Now, um, the thing that I think is impacting the market is the fact that some people um, are very nervous about the Delta, and I think they're calling the other one the Wu, um, and they say they're just not going to go back in the office ever, and some people's offices completely shut down. Um, so it's, it's kind of affecting how people act in the marketplace of like their urgency to buy. And then the other one would be the fact that um, people are now starting to ask for approvals again prior to showings because of, uh, because of the uh, rise of the COVID cases. Do you think COVID increases are going to impact the fall market? Yeah. I actually thought we were going to have a phenomenal fall market, like a really, really good fall. Now I think we're just going to have a mediocre fall. And I think that's mostly because of the, the Delta and, and the office delays. I mean, once you put more time on the clock for the office and less people are coming back, that's going to affect the marketplace. Also, there's a lot of people who come to Chicago for work. They get relocated for jobs. A lot of people went on these hiring freezes again. So if that happens, that's less people coming here. We've had two deals fall apart because their jobs got pushed back and they just you know, didn't see the urgency to, to buy a place. Do any sellers who are holding back in the market due to COVID? No, no, most sellers don't care anymore. They want to get in on the market. I think the, the main thing people are thinking about is like the holiday season, but otherwise they're fine. Would another surge cause major pricing changes in Chicago? I don't think so. I mean, the market, I mean, COVID, the market's been really strong. You know, I, I don't think COVID has had as much of an impact on the city as some other recent events in the city, like crime and things of that nature. I, I think COVID's probably the secondary cause for, for the problems, but it is, you know, the, the longer offices have, uh, office delays have cooled off the market a little bit. Have the suburbs cooled off yet? Will they heat up again if there's more cases? Uh, they have cooled off. Uh, and I think that they're going to continue to cool off. I mean, suburbs really have never outperformed cities on a long haul like they have, and it's, it's unnatural, and I think cities are going to come back. I do. I don't care what anybody tells me. I think you're going to go back to work. I've said this a million times. You will go back to the office, and cities will exist. And I know that you're telling me that your office said that you're never going to take you back, and they've shut it down for good. But listen, guys, let's not be a knee-jerk reaction society. Let's come talk to me five years from now. It's impossible. If you could predict the future, if you're, you're telling me I'm an idiot when you're saying this right now, if you could predict the future, you wouldn't be doing whatever you would be doing, right? You would be betting on sports and horses. You'd be sitting on a yacht, living the best life ever, you know? But right now, my personal opinion and theory is that I think everybody's going to go back to work. Time will tell. We're going to timestamp this bad boy. And, all, and when I said it last year and the year uh, uh, earlier this year, but, you know, I think that is going to continue to help cool off the suburb market too. 
One, what kind of sentiment do you hear about COVID from your clients? I think some people, a lot of my clients are frustrated if they're sellers, because if you're in a high rise, uh, especially closer to Michigan Avenue, you're just, you're just mad, right? Because if this was real estate's all about timing, right? In 2018, you put a place up on Michigan Avenue. I mean, living on Michigan Avenue used to be like, like a big draw. It was like something that people were like really excited about. Uh, now it's kind of like a negative almost, which is crazy. It's crazy to think that. And I think a lot of people have the sentiment that like people because of COVID and stores closing and all this other BS crime increase. And that has to do with COVID because of the courts and things of like that. They're just mad. They're just like upset with the fact that like they have to deal with this. So like the timing right now is, is not ideal to be a seller if you're closer to Michigan Avenue and the sentiment they have towards it is just the fact that there's there, nobody wants to sell and sit on the market. And that's what they're mad about. Um, are COVID increases still impacting the high rise market? Yeah. Like we just said, the high rise market has currently about nine months of inventory. Okay. So a balanced market is four months. The great recession had 12 months. We're sitting at nine months. That's atrocious. I've never seen that much inventory since the recession. Yeah, I mean, if we wipe out the COVID hold last year and a half. So, you know, you look, you look at the fact that nine months, it's, it's, it's terrible. But then again, at this time last year, there's 24 months. So it's getting better. It is, it's getting better. But the high-rise market's still getting crushed overall. Uh, do you think high-rise markets will make a full return next year? I don't know if I'd say full. Full means like we're a hardcore seller's market. I think we'll be balanced, maybe, maybe slight edge to sellers early spring. One of the reasons I think this is because I do believe in cities. Uh, I look at stats and, you know, the, the, the past, right? History always repeats itself. It's one of the oldest sayings of since the dawn of man. Okay, history repeats itself. And I, I, I look at the fact that the cities have always outpaced the suburbs in sales. So that's, that's how it's always been. And the fact that right now cities aren't performing doesn't really make sense to me. I look at the fact that since the dawn of humanity, people have gotten together with people and created cities and cities still exist. Uh, they're saying cities aren't going to exist. I'm not going to buy that. So there's two things. I look at the fact that the rental market was at the worst levels it's ever been in history last fall. And as of right now, it's at the highest point. In fact, 5% higher than ever, which shows that people are coming back to cities. And a lot of those people who are renting, their leases are going to come due in March, April, May, first part of June. And they're going to have to renew at an astronomically high rate. And you have these bargain bin prices on high rises with low interest rates. I like to think people like a deal. Americans love a deal. We created the sale, right? We created the slogan, let's let's get a sale. You know, let's there's a sale at Nordstrom. I need one pair of jeans. You, you walk out of there, you got 10 pairs of jeans. You only needed one. Why'd you buy 10? You felt like you were winning. A lot of people like to feel like they win. They can overpay to rent or they can underpay to buy. I don't know. Call me crazy. I think 2022 high-rise market balanced. I, I would say I, I don't think it's going to be crazy. So full full return 23-24 full return, like, like hardcore seller markets, hundred percent, you know, you want to make money. Everybody always tells me they want to make money. You want to make money by now, by now, buy a high rise. Now that I guarantee you'll make money, you know, not in a year, probably not in 24 months, next five to six years. You will. Absolutely. You know, remember when you told me that, uh, the stock market was going to fail in March of 2020 could have bought Tesla. Then could have put your life savings on Tesla. You wouldn't be listening to this podcast right now. If you did that, you sit on a yacht. When you have nothing to do. If you're so rich, you wouldn't know what to do with your life. So buy when everybody else is scared. People are scared to live in high rises still. Buy now. Are there any new travel restrictions? Uh, I think Chicago technically, I read that uh, we, we restrict every state. I don't think a single state is allowed to be in Chicago right now. That's technically. It's not mandatory. It's, it's advice. I think the, the, the travel advisory. So they're telling you, hey, if you're in any other state, do not come to Chicago. And I think the travel restrictions are what's affecting the marketplace in the international market big time because a lot of international people still can't get here. I still think Q4 is going to be a good uh, quarter for the beginning of the, the international market, but that restriction is what's hurting the market. Is Chicago pretty much back to normal? No, absolutely not. We were back to normal like two months ago and then we got to wear masks again. If anything, we're going to probably, you know, regress a little bit more going into, uh, into the fall. Cause I, I know good old JB is going to put something out there. I could feel a lockdown coming. Um, I, I, I just, I know he's going to do something, but we'll see. We'll see. Only time will tell. 
Do you still think the international market will start back, start to come back in Q4? I do. I don't think it's going to come roaring back as much as I thought it was going to, but I do think it's going to come back because people, people got to get their money here. They just, people are desperate to do something with their money. Guys, inflation's going to start hitting all time highs. Like it's real. This is as much as the media tells you it's not, it's, it's, it's happening. You know, look what's happening with gas prices. Look what's happening out there. This, these are facts. You know, what's a good tangible asset to hide your money and launder money to America? Buy real estate. What do you think these guys in China and India are doing right now? What do you think the guys in the Middle East, Russia? They got to get their money to America. Beautiful way to do it. Which U.S. cities do you think have been the most impacted by COVID? Um, it's hard to say because it's a very political question. Um, the states that are doing the best in real estate, just in real estate, um, have been a lot of the ones that have lower COVID restrictions. I mean, look at Texas and Florida and Tennessee. They're crazy. I mean, they are crazy. I mean, California's doing really well, and they're very tight. But, I mean, Salt Lake, Idaho, Tennessee, Texas, uh, Florida, you know, it, it's, it's literally out of control what's happening out there. Uh, Denver's been really, really strong, too. But, you know, you look at New York, Illinois, a lot of the, the other states where we have more restrictions – I feel like we're doing a lot worse. Um, so I don't know if that has anything, if it's solely because of the restrictions or what, but like it, it is. And I, I think there's more stuff into it, like taxes and just, you know, uh, other things that are happening there. But it is been, um, I would say that big cities and ones that have harder COVID restrictions are definitely, I mean, it's statistical proof, are, are performing worse than the less restricted states. Um, and that, I'm not saying they're right or wrong. I want to make sure we're clear on that. I'm just telling you, you're asking me a question on this, and that's unfortunately the answer. Um, are sellers less willing to do showings in open houses with the Delta variant? I, I, a couple. Some that are like pregnant or um, uh, have a newborn don't want open houses. Showings they don't care about. Listen, there's, there's always going to be 10 to 20% of the population no matter what, whether we call this Delta, COVID, there's some other bath disease that comes out of nowhere, et cetera. They're just going to be nervous in general. You could not have any disease and they just don't want you in your house. So, you know, I would say, though, the general consumer is pretty much like this is what we're doing. This is just how life is. Uh, are foreclosures going to increase with COVID on the rise? No. I mean, foreclosures, right? Like the lowest point of all time. Zombie foreclosures are way down. Zombie foreclosures are foreclosures. They're not houses that eat other houses. That's not what a zombie foreclosure is. Uh, as much as you think it would be. Uh, but a zombie foreclosure is a foreclosure that's coming on the market that's not on the market yet. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff, they say, coming in some parts of the, sh uh, the city of Chicago, but they're not there yet. Have you been, uh, have any of your deals been in impacted by COVID recently? Yeah, I mean, listen, fall buyers are the worst. I hate spring sellers and I hate fall buyers. Fall buyers are super picky. They know they have a little bit of power and they use it and they use it hard. And we've we've lost probably more deals in the last 10 to 14 days than I have all year. Uh, and it's very frustrating. You know, you, I've had two deals, no joke, two deals. One of one specifically where a guy walked in the house, and goes, I'm not buying this place. I'm like, fuck you are buying this place. It's like, what are you going to do about it? You going to sue me? Courts are closed for the next year. You got bigger problems to worry about. He's true. He's right. He's a hundred percent right. hundred percent right. We stomped our feet. We bitched and moaned and blah, blah, blah. My, my clients ended up getting four grand out of it. That's it. We're back on the market. That, that, that four grand will be gone within 30 days. I mean, people are crazy right now. And, and you know what? People understand that they have the power. If you're a buyer, you can do whatever the hell you want. You really can. And I, I know some people are going to tell me, like, I got an attorney that can sue you and they'll do this. Yeah, you can. How long is it going to take you? How much time is it going to take? You got $50,000 in earnest money, you're going to tell me, right? Okay. Well, it's going to take you about two to three years to get that settled with where the courts are at today. Uh, by the time it's settled and you spend your court costs, hopefully the su judge sides with you. Maybe you get $20,000 out of that 50. Okay. And then it took you two to three years and how much time? If you're a guy that's in a high net worth property. Oh, and then you can't sell your property because if you're in litigation over earnest money, you cannot sell your property. So it's like, how much is this worth for you? The laws for real estate are really, I mean, honestly, they're, they're probably the stupidest thing in the entire world. If you really look into it and you actually really understand what it is, 
you can pull out a deal for anything you want. Nobody, nobody's going to do anything. I just tie it up. You'll tie up that property forever. So yeah, I'm seeing a lot of people do stupid stuff right now. That, that's a, that's a big thing and it's driving us crazy, but it happens every fall. I try not to be a prisoner in the moment saying like, Oh, it just has to do with COVID. Uh, I do think the, that the rise of this Delta is, is people are trying to use to their advantage, but I do think that it's, it's, it's been difficult lately. Um, are you concerned? Are your clients concerned about variants? Uh, I mean, I don't know. People are just hearing about COVID in general and just annoyed. I, I think people, the general person I talk to is over it. They're not over the disease saying it's not real. People are just sick of it. People are just want to move on with their lives. We want to go back to normal. I know people say they don't want to go back to normal. People want to go back to normal. And the general person I personally talk to are just like, Sick of talking about this. It's been almost two years. Let's get, let's get, let's move on. That's, that's generally say. So like when they're like, I don't, there's a, there's gonna be a different variant every day of the, uh, of the week. The reality is guys, this, this thing's going to be around probably for the rest of our lives. It's just like the flu, it's just something we have to live with. And, uh, I, I just think that's how most of my clients feel that, that talk to me about it. Um, and I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. You know, I think everybody should have their opinion on it. Uh, how do you think the variants will impact the real estate market? I think it all depends on how our office openings go. The sooner these offices get opened, the greater the chances the more people will move to the city and the, the quicker the market will recover. You know, at some point, I don't know when, a year, two, four, six, ten 10 years from now, we're just going to have to realize that this is here forever and we're going to go back to normal. And I think that's kind of the thing that we have to watch out for. Um, and that's why I think the variants can impact the real estate market because – how long are they going to kind of drag these out to where we're not going to be able to be back to normal? They said once we got the vaccines, we'll be able to live a normal life. Well, those came out and that didn't happen. So what's what's the next step? It's it's impossible to predict. Um, so if the variants keep getting worse, the markets can keep getting worse. Is COVID impacting Chicago in a different way than other big cities? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're just – we're much more strict on COVID than other big cities, and that's affecting our marketplace. Um you have to realize that like COVID also has been increasing crime because there's less people out. So crime is able to be committed. And the more crime that's committed, that's more fear in the market. The more fear that's in the market, the less people want to live in the city. You know, there's a lot of other COVID's brought on a lot of other stuff that impacts the market in different ways. You know, you look at the court systems are, are closed or backed up due to COVID. And that's, that's making other aspects be difficult. Like we just talked about, it's hard to get earnest money. It's harder to persecute people. It's harder to just do daily lives to make sure the court system's in order, which affects the real estate market. So there's so much that goes into this that can affect the market. Um, what are you hearing from agents in other big cities? Um, I mean, honestly, a lot of it, like my friends I have selling in like Texas and Florida where it's like, and, and Nashville, because we've been, I've been talking to so many people in different cities because so many of my clients are moving to other cities and like they laugh almost at me even like seattle which is like a super like left city which i would thought would be more restricted is like they're crazy high and they're just not as as locked down as we are um and i think that has a lot to do with it but our, our clients moving to houston um texas florida tennessee denver arizona a lot of them moving to arizona um they're just they're almost laughing about how crazy they, they have nothing in the market the average is one to two weeks in the market out there you know and and they don't have any of the restrictions that we have when it comes to real estate with the mask and things like that. And I, I do think that has a little bit of effect because a lot, of, a lot of our clients are moving there because they want to live life a little bit freer. Um, and it's, it, again, it's, it's a very almost like political thing that you have to walk a fine line on because you don't know who you're going to offend. And I, I don't care which side you sit on. I don't. My job is to sell business or sell real estate, and I have to understand both people's point of view. I can only tell you what people tell me and why they're going. I'm not saying I agree or disagree with it. I'm just saying that's kind of what we're hearing from our other people in other cities that are selling and they're, they're cleaning it up. I mean, they're having like literally the greatest years of all time. Are more companies delaying their return to work in person dates? Yes. Yes. We're seeing a lot more people delay. Um, and that's, you know, immediately affecting people's desire to live downtown. I mean, listen, we're still seeing a lot of people in the city. I mean, like you walk around, like I run every single morning, every morning, seven days a week, you know, rain, sun, sh snow, whatever. I'm running out there. And the last probably two to three weeks, specifically the last two to three weeks, like there's people everywhere. Like when I'm running at 5, 15, 5 30 in the morning, there, there was, I was the only person on the streets. I'm, to be frank, sometimes a little bit nervous because, you know, you run through alleys and shit and you don't know who's going to come out. 
And now there's there's like literally people everywhere. I have to like I have to like wait for people. I have to like run around people. Like I haven't I didn't see that two months ago. So you know there there is a delay, but people are definitely starting to kind of come back here. Um, what are you seeing on the commercial side of real estate? You know we're still seeing uh, the market be soft there, but there's been some pretty big signings. Some companies have have you know made some big signings, and I will tell you right now, the richest real estate people, are the ones that own commercial real estate. And where the market's at today, there's a lot of people that truly feel that cities are going to exist and that offices are going to exist, and they're buying them up because you can't get better deals than you can now. I mean, this is this is probably the best time in your lifetime if you got a billion dollars to invest like a hundred million in commercial real estate because it's only going to go up. That's it. Like we've bottomed. We're in recovery, and these guys are taking advantage of it. And I, I you know, my commercial brokers I talk to, like, there's a lot of people buying. There's not a lot of people renting out the stuff we got, but there's a lot of people buying the stuff. Um, let's see. Are you seeing more clients move back to the city to avoid their commute? Yeah, we are. It's slowly but surely picking up. Slowly but surely. Head in the right direction. What should um, buyers and sellers know about COVID and real estate right now? Um, I think the main thing to know about is just to kind of understand that at some point we're going to have to put this behind us and realize that this is here. And that we can't consistently just delaying the inevitable. I feel like buyers and sellers, not all of them, just a small select few, keep putting these things on pause because they think like, hey, next year it'll be better. This will be better. And I'm like, listen, if you got a buy or sell, do it now. You can't, we can't predict what's going to happen with this whole COVID situation. So you just got to realize that, listen, we got we to gotta deal with what we know today and either buy now or, or sell now. But you can't just keep doing these pauses because – you think that COVID might be, you know, more favorable, or less favorable for you a year from now. You just got to kind of work with the cards you got dealt today. What misinformation are you hearing from other realtors about the COVID and real estate? I, I don't, nothing. I don't, I don't, everybody makes up. Every, there, there is so much misinformation in general. You know, who's right, who's wrong. You talk to three different doctors, they'll tell you different stuff that can, and how that affects the market. I mean, I don't know. You know, not, none of us really know. At, at the end of the day, I don't listen to anybody about it. I just, I look and deal with my own, I'm in my own lane just trying to figure it out and help my clients as well as I can. How do you stay motivated in a difficult, difficult climate? I mean, half our market is like unbelievably hot and the other half is shit. Uh, I say motivated because I want to win. I like to, I like to see it. I like a challenge. The high rise market's a challenge. I love a challenge. I love being told I can't do something and proving people wrong. Uh, so that's, that's, that's what motivates me. I've always had a chip on my shoulder. Are people wearing masks outside in Chicago? Uh, I mean, you see some people. Uh, again, some people are just naturally nervous. If you're outside of the city and you're in the suburbs, nobody's wearing a mask. But in the city itself, people are wearing masks. Uh, but, you know, walking around outside on their own, I, I mean, every now and then I'll see people. Uh, how do you think the new federal, ma federal mandates may impact real estate? Um, well, there's one on the table that if you own a company of more than 100 people, uh, everybody has to be uh, vaccinated or um, you lose your job. Um, so, I mean, could that bring up unemployment? Maybe, um, I have my opinions on, on the subject, but you know, it's, it's, it's too early to say because it, again, it's, it's a political question and it has to do with, you know, uh, let the two parties ballot it out and we'll, we'll figure out how that can impact the market. Once we figure how the cards fall on that, it's just too early to say if that's going to actually pass or not. Well, I mean, it's passed, but whether or not that's, it's going to be enforced or not. Um, are the sub suburbs still selling like crazy? We already talked about that. What's the current months of inventory? Is it a buyer seller's market downtown? So like we talked about like the high rise markets hovering around like nine months, maybe 10 months, depending on which area you're in, uh, which would make it a buyer's market. The outskirts like Lincoln Park and Lakeview are hovering around three to four months. Wicker Park Bucktown's about 3.4 to 3.6 months of inventory. West Loop's about six to seven months of inventory. And the South Loop's about six to seven months of inventory. So, I mean, you know, most of the market is like, semi-favorable to sellers to a balanced 50% uh, of the market is a buyer's market. So again, it just depends on what you're selling. The general way to look at it is if you got a smaller building outside of the city, it's going to be slower at the, just because of the time of the year, but like it's, it's still doing pretty decent. Bigger building in the heart of the city is going to be tough or a townhouse in the heart of the city is going to be tough. Um, is outdoor space still a priority since COVID won't seem to go away? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I still think people want to be are outside and have more outdoor space just because a lot of people are working from home more. We're, we're starting to see the hybrid model kind of get more 
into the market. Uh, and that's making people be like, you know, I want to be able to work outside or be able to kind of like roam around outside and not kind of feel as trapped as I, as I would since I'm, I'm home more often. Uh, which Chicago buildings have your favorite outdoor space? I mean, there's there's a million of them. I mean, it, and this is like a weird question because, you know, if, uh, high rise compared to a little building. You know, if you got a little building, you have a big uh, roof deck that's going to be the most desired. If you're in a big building, if you have like a sick like outdoor patio with a pool, that's going to be the best part. But I, I can't think of any buildings off the top of my mind. So that's all the questions we have today. Um, that's kind of like a little bit of an update of kind of like how this is all affecting the marketplace. I think the best thing to kind of know is that we're in changing times. Things are getting better. I, I try not to read all the negativity that they put out there. I try to stay positive on this. And I do think fully that this will all continue to turn in the right direction. As negative as a lot of this news is out there and, and as negative it is of nine months of inventory in certain areas, there was 24 months. So think about that. You know, that's, that's almost a third of the inventory has been wiped out. Or we only have a third of the inventory that we had before, so the rest has been wiped out. So I do think the market's going to continue to improve. I do think cities are going to continue to get better. Hang tight if you're a seller. If you're a buyer, take advantage while you can. Thanks so much to listening to Literacy Live.